G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name's Matthew. In this video we're going to have a look at how to set up and use the rotary attachments for the J630 and J750 laser machine. On the J630 we can use the roller rotary attachment which I will show you and on the J750 we can use either the roller rotary or the chuck rotary. So this is the uh, J750, so we've got the chuck version of our rotary attachment here, so it uses a jaw and a chuck, and uh, we can grip the object in the chuck and place the tail stop up for support. The roller rotary attachment uses these two horizontal bars, and we just place the item directly on top. What I like to do for some uh, slippery or very smooth objects is to place some rubber bands around the top here just to give it some extra grip on those steel rollers. So the first one we're going to have a look at is the roller rotary attachment. The connection for the roller rotary attachment is down on the right hand side of the machine, just lower than the bed. So the first thing that we need to do is lower the bed in order to access that. In order to lower the z-axis on the J630 and J750, we press the settings button or this gear icon here and the menu will come up with z-move at the top. You press the left or right buttons to raise and lower the bed. In this case we're pressing the right button and the, the bed is being lowered. And we continue to lower the bed until we have access to the uh, rotary attachment socket on the inside of the machine. Before we power off the machine, what I like to do is move the x-axis over to zero location. So in this case, it's on the right hand back corner and our y-axis is all the way at the back. I then press the origin button, which is the target button in the middle of the cursors. And now that we have access to this socket for the uh, rotary attachment, we need to power off the machine. So we turn the machine off and we disconnect the axis plug here. This is our Y axis. So we can unplug that and just let it hang. And then using the rotary attachment, we can connect that into the same socket. So now that the rotary attachment has been connected, we can power on the machine. The machine will want to do a system reset and reset axis X and Y. We can see that Y is continually rotating here. X has been reset, but what we can do is move the rail back over the sensor, bring it forward a little bit, back over the sensor again, until the system resetting display has been cleared. Once the machine has been reset, then we can position our um, rotary attachment where we want to use it. So we need to first of all make sure that it's parallel with the x-axis, so we can line that up. We also need to be able to lower the z-axis so that this will fit over the top. So we can move the y-axis by hand and use the buttons on the controller to move the x-axis. And then using the buttons on the controller, as we talked about before, the Z move, we lower that bed so that the rotary attachment, as well as the object that we're engraving, is in focus. So we can place the object on there, continue to move our Y axis by hand until it's low enough to pass over the top of the object. And then using our two red dot visual focusing system, we're going to focus the two red dots until they become one at the engraving position. So now we're in Lightburn and we've connected to our J750 laser machine. This is the same setup for the J750 as it is for the J630. What we need to do is go into the rotary setup. You'll see this icon up the top up here, but you'll also find it in laser tools and then rotary setup. We select what type of rotary we're using. This uh, first one we're using is the roller rotary. So we press roller, enable rotary, and the settings for our um, J630 and J750 machines with 5,000 steps per rotation. The roller diameter is 24.5 millimetres and you also need to measure your object. 
So it's important to measure your object and uh, a good set of calipers is a great way to do that. Now this roller diameter uh, for the roller rotary is not required but it's just a helpful calculator to help calculate things like the circumference. So what we're going to do is place a logo here on the uh, in Lightburn and we're going to rotate it in the orientation that we want it on the bottle. So I'm just going to use the rotate here, 90 degrees. That rotates it. I'm going to use the starting position as uh, the center. So that places our green dot in the center of our workpiece. You could, if you wanted to, use any of those positions. It just depends on where you want to start on your uh, final object. So in this particular case, I'm using the center. We also need to set the size that we want it to fit on the, um, the object that we're engraving. So in this case, I only want it to be approximately 50 millimeters tall. So in that case, I'm actually gonna use this width as our height because it's coming out uh, in the sidewards direction. So we're gonna change the width to 50 millimeters, which makes the total length around the bottle of 82. So now we can set it to fill, set our um, engraving power and speed and lines per inch, etc. And we don't need air on this particular metal bottle, so we will just leave air off and we say OK. Now we're going to send that through to the laser and just to double check our settings. Our settings for this are roller rotary, it's enabled with 5,000 steps per rotation and the object diameter is 73. We say OK, send, we'll call this one J750, enter. Now it's a good idea before you press frame on your object um, with the roller rotary because it's not fixed, it's sitting on top of the rollers, we don't want it to spin too fast. So what we can do is press the speed button and using the left button we can use the cursor button under there and bring the one down to zero and change the second value down to say 30 millimeters a second. That's a good speed to do our frame at and then we can press the tick button and it's been saved. And just to demonstrate that, if I change this quickly back to um, the setting that I had it on, which is 150, and I accept that, if I do a frame on here, watch the bottle jitters around. So that goes very fast and you can't see where it's framing. Whereas if we have the setting change down to 30 millimeters a second and we accept that and do our frame, we can see it frames much slower and the bottle doesn't jitter around on the rollers. Now because I've start, uh, set my origin to start in the center of where I want it, then I'm going to line it up with the center of the text that's on the bottom there. So I can press, um, position my bottle, press origin, and now I can frame it nicely and it will show me the bounds of where it's going to fit. Then it will return to its origin position, ready for me to press start. roller rotary because it's not fixed it's a good idea to um, just have the speed a little bit slower than the machines capable of engraving because what can happen is it can cause excess vibrations and the vibrations may move this bottle up and down along the rollers so you can try rubber bands around it however you've got to make sure that the rubber bands don't have any bumps or they're, they're nicely uh, parallel to each other so it rolls nicely around the bottle and doesn't give any jittering so now we've finished the uh, rotary engraving and we want to go back to the normal mode of the x and y axis we need to disconnect the rotary attachment and reconnect the y-axis gantry in order to do that, we also need to make sure that the Y-axis uh, rotary setting has been disabled. So we do that in Lightburn, and I'll show you how to do that now. Once you're finished with the roller rotary attachment, we can uh, go in and we can disable the 
rotary and press OK. We can also check it in the machine settings, so we can go edit, machine settings. It reads the information from the controller and we can go down in this list where it says rotary parameters and we can check to see that it's set to false. If that's set to false, then when we reset the laser machine, it will be back to its normal operating mode. We press OK. Just in case it is still set to true, we can uh, change that value here, write it to the control board, and then you can see it says controller settings written successfully. You can press OK, power off the machine, and then reconnect the Y-axis scan tree. Now once it's been disabled, we can now power off the machine. We can move the Y-axis back towards the back of the machine, disconnect the rotary attachment, and reconnect the Y-axis gantry. Make sure that the fitting is secure and never disconnect or reconnect any of these axes while the machine is powered on. So the chuck setup is um, connections are the same as the roller setup, so we plug it in on the side. Uh, we keep the motor on this side of the machine. This, uh, I find that a lot easier. And then using the uh, chuck key, we can open the jaws and clamp our bottle. We also have options to put uh, inward or outward facing jaws on here, so you can change those, they're included. So you need to make sure that the tail stop is central so that when it rotates, that the uh, bottle is not gonna be up high on one side and low on the other side. So do make sure that it is set and uh, it's rotating evenly all the way around. Now the setup for the uh, chuck rotary attachment is the same as the roller. The only difference is that on the light burn setup, we select chuck. Obviously, enable rotary. And the mirror output to rotary, if the numbers and, and letters and things are coming out in a mirror image, then we need to tick this box. With our rotary attachments, I find that we do need to turn it on. So we leave that on. We set the steps per rotation to 10,000 for the chuck rotary attachment. That is the J750's chuck rotary attachment. We place our object diameter in there. This then calculates the circumference. So what we can do with that is that we can use that circumference to um, have the maximum wrap around for our bottle or whatever object we're using. So that little uh, setup in the rotary attachment is very good to see what our maximum rotation would be. So if we want something just to be, you know, half of that, then we can calculate that and make the object that we're engraving on there uh, half of the circumference. I just want to show you one other thing with the, uh, the rotary attachments. I've put my phone number here and I'm engraving it on the bottle and without uh, using, changing any other settings than I've already showed you, then uh, the text may come out in reverse. So what I wanna show you here is that if we have a look at the, uh, the text on here, the phone number is printed backwards. So what you do to rectify this is that you change the uh, setting on the rotary setup to mirror the output. So I'm gonna go back into the rotary setup and I'm gonna mirror output to rotary and press OK. And now I'm gonna start that job again. You can see now that the numbers are coming out in the correct order and in the right orientation. So if that does happen to you, then that's all that you need to do is mirror the rotary output so it rotates in the opposite direction.